Hey guys, this is Kevin from Samson Performance, Kevin Wilson SBC. Do a little talking about double adjustable coilover shocks, something that everyone loves to talk about when it comes to drag racing. And uh, these can really kick your butt if you let them. And what I have on the table today is what we're gonna be running on the 48 Ford with a, with a blown small block Chevrolet when we get it back on the track. We ran a set of QA1 single adjustable shocks for eight years now. And everything that you, all the videos you see of the, of the 48 up till now had single adjustable QA1 shocks on them. 48 Ford weighs about 3,500 pounds with me in it. Yep, I'm heavy. And uh, naturally aspirated with a 406 Gen 1 small block Chevrolet 4155 bore, 3.75 stroke. Um, the car ran 128, 129, 60 foots, and we were pretty proud of that, actually. Um, the car ran 6.0s, and, you know, it was naturally aspirated, a dominator on methanol, no nitrous, no boost. Uh, lots of gear, had a 456 gear, turbo 400. Um, we ran a Cameron converter in it, and uh, it, it, it ran pretty good for the, for the weight and all it was. Definitely not aerodynamic. So we became pretty big believers in QA1. Those, that car started out as a street car, street driven, with those same shocks on them. And we never had any problems with those shocks. No leaking, the valving worked great. Uh, we still got them as a matter of fact. And uh, I told dad we're gonna hang on to them. This is a set of DD501s. And you can go to the QA website. I'll have the link below in the description. You can look at the specs on these, but this is what's going on the car. These were very similar to the to the spacing that we had already and from center to center these are 16 and 7 8 center to center and these will compress all the way down to 11 and 5 8 of an inch so a couple things I want to talk about here we're not going to talk about front coilover shocks or front suspension that's going to be a different video I already have a video on wheelie bars and wheelie bar stagger and unfortunately in our car, the, the center line for, in the 48 Ford is a little higher than we would want. Generally, you want the center line pretty low. Ours, the center line's kind of high. Uh, that does lead to a little more wheel standing than I want. Um, in that wheelie bar video, I told you wheel stands don't win races. The, the fans love them and they're cool to watch. I, I enjoy seeing them. But as a, as a race car driver, if you're trying to really win that race, Doing a wheel stand is not winning that race. You got a lot of energy going up towards the sky and I'd rather have that energy pushing that car down the track. So it's also very difficult to steer a car if your front wheel's on the track. Um, uh, you can steer it with the rear end and, and, and we have, and we do at times. Um, but I'm doing everything I can to tune the wheelies out of the 48 Ford and, and get it so that we can um, get more momentum down the track. That's, that's the four link, that's the coilovers, that's the wheelie bars, that's the preload, that's the stagger, that's the front end. It all works together, guys. It, everything works together on launching a drag car. So these are Promastar DD501s. And we have 150 pound spring on here. And we've done a lot of calculation to get there. There's a lot of tools on the internet that will give you a good starting range. Um, the, the springs we had on the 48 Ford before now were variable rate springs, believe it or not. I mean, like I said, it started out as a street car. So the, the main thing to point out, the first thing I want to say is this is fully extended. And 16 and 7 8 from center to center. We want to set these up so that when the car is at fully loaded, race ready, fuel, everything, we're ready to do a burnout and go down the track. I want these center to center under load to be at 14 inches. And QA1 has all this on their website. There's many articles on this, but it's important that you get the shock into a position where you have enough extension and you have enough compression without hitting the limits of the shock. We know the limits of the shock. We know 
the, the limit of this shock is 16 and 7 eighths, fully extended, fully compressed, we know it's 11 and 5 eighths. So if you, if you do the math, we've got a little over a five inch travel uh, on this shock. And I want this setup at 14 inches fully loaded. We also can get the ride height set by moving the spring up and down, tightening or loosening the spring. But that's where we're shooting for. And that's important to understand before you even mess with compression or rebound knobs, before you turn the first dial, the shock has to be set up correctly in the car at ride height, at race weight. Do not even start messing with compression or rebound until you get that right. And QA1, they're great guys. You can call them up. They will help you get your shock set to that right spot. These DD501s, we're going to set them at 14 inches. We're going to adjust the ride height with the spring. And then we're going to go out and we're going to test. But before you do anything else, that shock has to have the right amount of sweet spot to extend and compress. Number one. All right, now that we've got the shock set up and we've got the right ride height and the right center to center distance, 14 inches, let's talk about a few things. This coilover spring is a two and a half inch coilover spring. This is a QA1 HT150. All this will be in the, in the description. This is a 150 pound linear spring. A lot goes into this calculation. So what doesn't go in that calculation is rear end, center section, wheels, brakes, slicks, wheelie bars. Everything that's attached to the rear end is unsprung. These springs are not having to support the weight of those items. These springs are having to support the frame, the body, our radiator is now in the trunk, so the radiator, the weight of the radiator is going to be on these springs. The air dam, the, the wing on the back of the car, added weight, these springs will be supporting that. We are leaving the lead acid battery and going to a 16 volt lithium battery, but that battery sits over the center of the rear end. Actually, it's more to the passenger side. There's a reason for that. But this spring is supporting all of that weight, all of the unsprung weight doesn't go into calculating this spring rate. We're starting with 150 pounds. There's something very critical about that though. This is a 12 inch spring, free weight, free. Just sitting on, on, the, on the bench here, 12 inches. And right now, if we measure 12 inches, it's, we don't have this loaded at all. It's 12 inch spring, two and a half inch over. With the weight of the car, with it ready to go down the track, we want this at 14 inches. I want this spring compressed about three to three and a half inches. I need some compression in this spring for this spring to help the extension and help compression. It does both. This is a 12 inch spring. If I'm not compressing this spring 25 to 30% sitting still, let's say I've got 10% compression. That's too stiff a spring for my setup then. Let's say I got 50% compression. That's too soft a spring. You want to shoot for 25 to 30%, plus or minus a couple percent. I would err on the side of a little softer for drag racing than stiffer. I'm going to want this spring to have a little stored energy compressed to help it extend, but then also not be so hard that I can't compress the shock either. So that's very important. Because of some of the weight we've added to the car, 
by moving the radiator to the rear, building the rear spoiler and wings, the and um, and the battery puke tank is now in the trunk because we're going with an 871 blower on methanol. I got to have a vented puke tank, and that's going to be in the rear. We knew we were adding a little more weight to the rear, so I did go to a 150 pound spring. If when I get this car ready and we set it down and we get the ride height set and I don't have 25 to 30% of spring compression, I will regroup. So that's very important. You're looking for 25 to 30% spring compression. Now, compression and rebound. This is what everyone thinks is black magic. Let's talk a little bit more about what compression and what rebound do on this coilover shock. Compression and rebound. I'll do a I'll do a shot, a screenshot of these a little more close so you can see them, but there's a C compression, which could also be referred to as bump. There's an R for rebound, which I call most of the time extension. So compression and extension makes a lot more sense to me. And quite simply, compression is when the shock compresses down. Extension is when the shock extends. Pretty simple to me, so I, I, you'll hear me refer to these a lot as compression and extension. However, the R is rebound, extension. C is compression. Let's talk about extension first. Let's talk about the R knob first. We're running a four link car. The 48 Ford sits on top of a 1986 Cutlass G-body frame that we back halved with a checkered racing back half, a pro four link back half with a narrowed Ford nine inch, big chrome molly four links, anti-roll bar, pan hard bar, etc. The goal for me on a four link car is to have the slicks, I want to drive the frame up and the slicks, I want to drive them towards the track. Now I'm, I am really over exaggerating this here, but just imagine on the launch, the very first split second is a compression, but then it, it pushes the slick down and the extension setting help controls how much of that slick gets pushed to the ground. If your car is a big squat car, your car squats. And what do I mean by that? When you launch your car, if the slick and the frame come closer together, that's squat. Okay, you're actually with a car that squats real hard, you're actually pulling the slicks into the frame off the track. Now, of course, the slicks don't leave the track, but you're not really planning the slick. You're pulling the slick up. And the way you overcome that is with some very aggressive compression setting. I'm talking about a car or a chassis that actually can get with adjustments on the four link and adjustments on the front. We'll talk about the front later in a separate video, but I'm actually talking about a car that can extend the shock on the launch and drive the slick down. For a radial car, this is absolutely critical. Radials love to be forced on the track more so than a slick. However, on a slick, I still want some extension driving the slick to the ground. This extension knob, the R, the rebound. When I turn this, there's a minus and a plus. When I turn this in the plus direction, I am adding resistance. I am making it harder to extend the shock. So the, the more I crank in the positive 
extension, the harder it is for the car to drive the slick to the track. So you're looking for a balance here. You don't want the car to violently throw the slick to the track, wad the slick up and just create a very dangerous situation or some very serious tire shake or dead hook the car. But you wanna have enough resistance so that the slick gets driven to the track but not violently thrown to the track. And that's what this does. That's what this R setting does. It is all about how much resistance or how much force, how many pounds of force does it take to extend the shock to separate the shock extension and separate the rear end to the track from the frame. Compression. Let's talk about compression. Compression is simply the same thing with regard to how much pressure, force, does it take to compress the shock. The more I turn compression to the positive side, the more pressure it takes to, to collapse or compress the shock. Now, why is that important? Well, we know for cars that squat, that don't get that separation, the only way for them to not suck the slick up into the frame and spin is to add clicks of compression so that when the car launches and the slick tries to come up into the frame, you've got enough compression in the shock to where it, 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 it's holding the slick to the ground and then you've got enough rise on the front to transfer that weight to, to keep the slick planted. The compression setting is simply how much force does it take to compress the shock. The first 60 to 100 foot for the 48 is the most critical, and I would say for most cars launching. It's a balancing act with holding the slick to the track. So let's say you get, you get your R, your extension set, and it plants the slick like you want it. If you don't have enough compression, as soon as you start to go, the slick's just going to come back up off the track and you're going to spin or not have as much traction as you, as you normally would. So as you extend and you start launching, you want enough compression to hold the slick on the track and then gradually let the slick come back to normal ride height. Too much compression, you bring the slick to the track and you just hold it, hold it, hold it, you're eventually gonna either overcome the sidewalls, get into some tire shake, or get out of whack. Uh, put the car on the wall even maybe. Um, so it's really a balancing act between these two knobs working together. Let's pause for a minute and let's, let's summarize compression and rebound one more time. R, rebound, same thing as extension. As I go positive on the clicks, the harder it is to extend the shock. As I go negative, the easier it is to extend the shock. Compression, positive clicks. As I put positive clicks in compression, the more force it takes to compress the shock. Negative, the easier it is to compress the shock. Now guys, there is, this is just one small piece of launching a drag car. We've, we got away with single adjustable for a long time, but wheelie bars, shocks, springs, four link, instant center, length, instant center, height, center line of the car, front end rise. These all must work together. But if these rear coilovers aren't right, <laughs> you will pull your hair out chasing rabbits. There is so much to getting our 48 down that track straight 
the, the center line's high in the car. It's just, it's, it's a challenge getting that car to launch and go straight. And we, we had to learn our car. We, we had to learn how much preload it took with me in the car on the scales to, to get the car to go straight. If you're running a four link car with coilovers, I, for that matter, a ladder bar car with coilovers, four link car with coilovers, if you're not scaling your car, then you're guessing. And until we got our car, until we invested in a set of scales and we began to scale our car, we were guessing. Now I know the 48 Ford, prior to this blown small block Chevrolet, I know exactly what it wanted on the corner weights with me in the car. I knew with me in the car, the left rear needed about 50 pounds more corner weight than the right rear. If I got closer to 30 pounds, the car would push to the left. And when you have a car pushed that hard, you can try to overcome it with wheelie bars. You could try to overcome it with shocks, but then you're getting things out of balance. You're, you're creating a, a non-ideal situation and you're getting your suspension kind of wound up. So we had to learn how much preload we needed to put in our car. We do not run any uh, rear end offset or rear end stagger. Our rear end's centered. Um, we haven't ever had to do that. Will we have to do that with this blown motor? We don't know. We'll have to get out and test and see what the car does. But we're definitely going with a set of double adjustable shocks. So hopefully this has helped demystify a double adjustable shock a little bit more. Thanks for watching. More to come on the front coilovers and more to come on four-link setup for launching a drag car.